from Washington, the McLaughlin Group, the American Original. For over three decades, the sharpest minds, best sources, hardest talk. Issue one, containing ISIS. I also leave here confident that NATO allies and partners are prepared to join in a broad international effort to combat the threat posed by ISIL. Already, uh, already allies have joined us in Iraq, uh, where we have stopped ISIL's advances. We've equipped our Iraqi partners and helped them go on offense. NATO has agreed to play a role in providing security and humanitarian assistance to those who are on the front lines. Key NATO allies stand ready to confront this terrorist threat through military, intelligence, and law enforcement, as well as diplomatic efforts. And Secretary Kerry will now travel to the region to continue building the broad-based coalition that will enable us to degrade and ultimately destroy ISIL. In Newport, Wales on Friday, President Obama strategized with NATO on ongoing military operations to confront ISIS, the radical Islamic movement that has now decapitated two American journalists, Stephen, Stephen Sotloff and James Foley. Both Americans were revenge killings executed in reprisal for successful U.S. airstrikes against ISIS in East Iraq, notably at the crucial Mosul Dam. What's next? Syria, where ISIS is now focused on the Euphrates Levant region. Commander in Chief Obama acknowledges that U.S. operations against ISIS to date have been limited to rolling back ISIS in Iraq. So now it's ISIS in Syria. ISIS's strength is now estimated at 20,000 fighters. This figure includes some 2,000 European citizens. And get this, several hundred American citizens recruited from poorly assimilated immigrant communities in the U.S. Question, with NATO now on board, does President Obama have a coherent strategy for dealing with ISIS? And if so, what is it, Pat Buchanan? It's coherent in Iraq. It's not only coherent, it's working. The United, with the United States air power, ISIS has been defeated in four straight battles, among them Mount Sinjar, the Mosul Dam has been retrieved, the Kurds are fighting against them, the Shia brigades are fighting against them, the Iraqi army is fighting against them, and with air power they can degrade and I think eventually defeat them. Can the Iraqi army recapture all that territory? An open question. The real key, John, is Syria. Now, the United States, I don't believe, has the authority now to wage airstrikes in Syria. I think the president's going to come back. And, but when you get right down to it, look at what's there. Turkey's got an army of 400,000 people. Syria's got hundreds of thousands under arms. Iraq's got hundreds of thousands under arms. We do have the ground troops who are not Americans and using air power. If you work with Syria, I think you can degrade and I think you can defeat them. As for annihilating them, no. Who gives us the authority to bomb in Syria? We do not have the authority right now to bomb. Whose authority? Now, you've got to go to the Congress of the United States, which I, oh, my you prediction, do. I'm going to predict that. Did he need that when he was bombing in, in, in Iraq? No, in he Iraq? did not because, but no, he did not because of the previous uh, resolution. But in Syria, I think he's going to go to Congress and ask for authority to bomb in Syria. But the key here is, are you going to get Assad's support? And are you going to work with the Iranians? And are you going to work with Hezbollah and the Russians if you do? Okay, Brits worried. Concern is widespread that ISIS militants are expected to focus on the U.S. and Europe as targets to carry out terrorist attacks. Quote, I am certain that after a month, they will reach Europe, and after another month, America. So says King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia. And at the Vatican, security has been stepped up after the Italian newspaper Il Tempo reported that Pope Francis is, quote, in the crosshairs of ISIS, unquote. Also, Speaker, in Britain, Prime Minister David Cameron believes that ISIS poses an urgent threat to the UK. He is deeply troubled by the covert movement of thousands of EU passport holders through Turkey and into Syria. Here is what he is proposing. So we will introduce specific and targeted legislation to fill this gap by providing the police with a temporary power to seize a passport at the border, during which time they'll be able to investigate the individual concerned. That's not all. Mr. Cameron's government also intends to prevent British ISIS jihadists from returning to the UK. It is abhorrent that people who declare their allegiance elsewhere are able to return to the United Kingdom and pose a threat to our national security. 
We are clear in principle that what we need is a targeted discretionary power to allow us to exclude British nationals from the UK. Question. Are Prime Minister Cameron's extraordinary marriages warranted, Eleanor Clifton? And just assume rapidly that they are. What do you, what do you think of his ideas? Uh, I think uh, the measures he's put in place are warranted, and because ISIS is a more immediate and direct threat to Europe than to our homeland, I think he's taken a, a appropriate action. But I want to follow up on what uh, Pat said. Um, NATO, I mean, as awful as ISIS is, this is an opportunity for NATO to redefine itself and to find a mission, for President Obama to uh, chart a course and I think bring renewed purpose for the rest of his presidency and to put policies in place that will leave his successor a better hand than he was dealt when he came into office. Uh, the president will go to Congress. Uh, the Congress is lining up quite nicely. You have uh, Senator Inhofe, who's the Republican chairman of the Armed Services Committee, basically saying uh, that, he, that, that, that Republicans would be supportive of an authorization of use of uh, position paper or resolution, whatever it's called, uh, to go into Syria. But if they do go into Syria, and that's not by no means guaranteed at this point, you go in with the kind of coalition that George H.W. Bush assembled back in the day. And pres the first President Bush is the president whose foreign policy President Obama admires the most. And to put together, in effect, a Desert Storm II is what this administration is now undertaking. It's a big task, but you cannot go bombing in Syria unless you have Jordan, you have Saudi Arabia, have the United Arab Emirates, and maybe an invitation from Turkey, which is a member of NATO, because ISIS is threatening uh, to Turkey mm -hmm. as well. It's, com sure it's complicated. Okay. Uh, um, I, I don't see an invitation from Syria itself, and that would be problematical. We don't want to be on the side of Assad in a holy uh, war. You've spent a lot of time in Britain. What's the story on ISIS in Britain? I think uh, Eleanor is absolutely right in the sense that there's a lot of concern in the part of the British intelligence services that these individuals will come back. We're talking about as many as 500 members of ISIS who have British citizenship or nationality. To, and live in, to, look, to return to live in Right, Britain. that they will come back and that because of what they've learned from existing from the group in terms of operational security they'll be able to stay under the radar people have to remember as well the MI5 the British Domestic Intelligence Service has a lot of people that they're already following so their concern is that these people will come back and they simply won't be able to monitor them to the degree that they would need to and that then they would commit atrocities so there is grave concern atrocities in England in England but potentially one of the great concerns in US and UK intelligence is that you might see a replication of the 2006 transatlantic plot where British nationals attempted to travel on American airliners to the United States and detonate those planes. So there's a dual threat from these people because of globalized travel. What do you think? Nullify the passports of these people? Well, I don't know what the specific uh, measures are, but one of the things we have to do is to find a way to keep them out of both uh, England and, frankly, the United States. But this is the kind of threat that we are now facing, and it's going to be a very serious threat, and it's going to go on for a long while, because these people are radicals, and they are absolutely committed to do enormous damage to the Western <coughs> countries, particularly the United States and England, for example. And we are going to be in a very, very difficult time for quite a while on these issues. You get one or two people who succeed in this thing. It'll change the whole mood in the country, and everybody understands that. Okay. Vice President Joe Biden willing to cross the river Styx. We will follow them to the gates of hell until they are brought to justice. Because hell is where they will reside. Question. Should we take Vice President Biden's rhetoric seriously? Is this Obama administration policy? I ask you, Eleanor Well, I think the president in, uh, at, in, at the NATO meeting and in Estonia basically said, we will find you wherever you are. The American reach is long. We do not forget. We will pursue you. Uh, he says in a, a more understated uh, way. But I think the kind of rhetoric that the vice president is using, uh, the American people are kind of thirsting for. I mean, I think the president is almost too low key in his public rhetoric. And I think the vice president has kind of filled that, that, that vacuum. I think the determination of this administration is there. And I think uh, Biden is conveying it. And the right. president, a little late to the game, right. he's conveying if, that if resolve. The determination as well. is there, John. The bridge we've got across is Iran. Now, the Iran has been on our side doing battle 
along with our troops up there in northern Iraq. Iran is the principal supporter of Assad. Hezbollah supports them. These are the fighting forces against ISIS. They're not very attractive from our standpoint, but if you're going to fight and win the war and ISIS is the main threat, then you've got to be able to deal with them the way we dealt with Stalin in World War II well, when the objective was Hitler. Well, there are multiple civil wars going on in the Middle East, and one of them is in, it, in Islam itself between the radicalized version and the and the and the version that ISIS represents which is so barbaric that even the more mm -hmm. radical Muslims the Al Qaeda can't stand mm -hmm. ISIS and so I think the US has to capitalize on that division yeah. within uh, Islam and I think that's uh, the what bottom we're starting line to do. the bottom line here is Syria is complicated it's complicated it's not easy to say that we're going to go in there without mm -hmm. Assad's authority, and it's not easy to say that we should go to Assad and get his authority. Do you have thoughts on that? I do. I, I, in, in contrast to Pat, I have concerns about the Iranian political strategy in, in the region. I, I think in terms of the ideology, Khomeinism, they, they will try and expand if we give them the opportunity in Lebanon. Do we have to have, try and have diplomatic relations? Yes. But the real key here, I think, is actually to engage with the tribes in Deir Ezzor, which is in eastern Syria, and Anbar, which is in Iraq, the two governorates, because the tribes there are subscribed to a very different ideology than ISIS, and we're already seeing disenfranchisement and, and, and fundamental dissatisfaction with what the Islamic State is doing. John, 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 let, let Pat in. John I think we're going to, the two most powerful forces in Syria are ISIS, which controls the northern half of the country, and Assad and his army, which control the southern half. In my judgment, in the near future, one of the other is going to be in Damascus. Assad is a bad man, but he does not uh. threaten the United States. ISIS is an evil force, and I think it ought to be defeated. And if we've got to work with the Iranians and the others to crush them, well, I think we ought to do it. We've worked with Iran in the past. We worked with them in Afghanistan. Sure we did. And uh, so I, I, don't, I don't think that's an issue. We have a common interest here, and I think that's going to be pursued. But it's a lot of tricky diplomacy. Right. We've dealt with a lot of other bad men. If Assad is as, oh, bad, as, you, if Assad is as bad as you say he is, no, you see, if you ISIS, see Charlie Rose's if interview ISIS, with him? If ISIS is as bad as we think it is, if it's the number one enemy we put all the forces there and then we deal with the problems of uh, Iran's ambition are you prepared efforts. to do what they're doing <laughs> demonizing Assad uh, uh, or you think demonizing I think they're understating Assad do as you? far as I'm concerned he's been a disaster in so many ways and so what does BB think of, uh, of I, I don't know I've never talked to him about it you in never have no, in a general way, I can only tell you that the Israelis understand that Assad is a total enemy of Israel. So that's that's well, being that way. What is ISIL? Uh, what a difference! I, 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 excuse I, I, me, I, 